Hello you guys, it's Austin Holliman back with another useful travel information playlist video. And today we're going to talk about, and I'm not associated with the Passport Bros anymore because of just the silly manners that's going on amongst it, but I know a lot of Passport Bros, former Passport, future Passport Bros watch my channel still because that's who I was known to be. Now, we're going to talk about how can you be a Passport Bro on a budget? That does not mean you'll be able to travel like Austin. Let me just throw that out there right now. I've been to three countries in the past three weeks, and then next week I'll be in another country. You're not going to be able to do this with this plan I'm giving you. Just, just forget about that. My budget is completely different. So the first thing is you want to plan ahead, okay? You want to plan ahead months at a time. And again, that means you can't be like Austin. I buy my plane tickets to the next country usually the day before or usually three days before. Very short notice where the price is a lot higher because I go places with one-way tickets and I leave when I feel like it. Okay? So my route is expensive. You're on a budget. You need to try to plan ahead to stay in a country for a month at a time, at least two weeks. If you're on a budget, you need to make the best out of the trip that you can get. One, two weeks to three months max. If you can stay somewhere longer than three months, you ain't got no damn budget. You can, you, you, you're doing something where you can travel just the same way I am. So you need to plan ahead. You need to be planning for your trips six months, three to six months in advance or even more, but even more is a stretch, but three to six months in advance. Why do I say that? The flights are cheaper. The Airbnbs are cheaper when you buy them for longer. Everything is, you're going to save a lot more money. You're going to be able to do a lot more research and figure out exactly where you want to go, figure out what's the best place to stay. You can do consultations with other content creators or one like myself on places that you've been to. Hit that link in the description below if you want a consultation. And that's how you'll be able to save money and you'll be able to travel on a budget and go places that you've always wanted to go. Next, this is a no brainer, but some people don't get this ride economy or ride coach on the airplane you do not need to ride first class okay I, the first class i don't even ride first class and uh, hell if i was riding first class i'll tell you one thing i wouldn't be able to go to three countries a month because the first class tickets and i know there's a way you can get them for a lot cheaper i know people that have gotten fifteen hundred dollar first class tickets for three and four hundred dollars there's some sort of trick that you could do to do that but i i don't i can't do that right now um why are you spending three and four thousand dollars on a plane ticket on a budget? I don't give a fuck how long that ride is, guys. I've rolled. I've I've been around the world going to t to Asia from South America or North America three or four times, and I can let you know right now. I've sat seventeen hours on a flight from Qatar to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Seventeen hours and thirty minutes, I believe it was, and my feet were not swollen. You got to know how to stand up, drink water, eat, maneuver around the plane to be able to endure it. It's not that damn bad. If it's that bad, you really don't want to go. I tell you what, you would sit on a 17-hour plane ride for $100,000, wouldn't you? So it all depends on how bad do you want to go you want to go. I wanted to go to Brazil so bad, I sat on a plane for 17 hours coming from Thailand. And that was before, that was after I went eight hours, what is it, seven or eight hours from Bangkok to to Qatar so yeah I flew a long time and then had layovers and all that shit and then I still had to fly to Rio so yeah it, it can be done ride coach it, it makes more sense to pay $1,100 for a plane ticket round trip plane ticket from Miami to Brazil than it does to pay four and five grand I've seen $15,000 plane tickets going from Miami to Brazil round trip it's, I don't know. For $15,000, I need to be sitting in a fucking jet by myself. I don't want to see nobody else but myself or somebody else I know. Why would I? I to, to me, that's just wasting my it, There's no flight on the damn planet that's worth that, at least unless it's a jet. You know, that doesn't make sense. Another tip that a lot of people don't do that I made the mistake on. The flight tickets may seem more expensive, but buy the flight tickets that come with one to two check bags okay 
I found a way to reduce my four bag travel, you know, collection that I have right now. I travel with four bags. I found a way to reduce it to three. But I don't know. When you leave the United States, if you're not flying, like American Airlines has a good check bag policy. But when you're flying on these cheap airlines, like I believe the spirit of Asia is Thai Airways or something. It's, it's one of those airways and they tried to charge me $450 for two check bags. Two check bags. It was cheaper for me to buy another fucking plane ticket going from Cambodia, from Vietnam to Cambodia. No, it was Cambodia to Bangkok. It was cheaper for me to buy another plane ticket to go from there than it was to pay for them check bags. That is, they, they showed their ass in Cambodia that day. I don't know what that was about. But if you buy the plane ticket that says, hey, it comes with one or two check bags and it's under 23 kilograms, do the math on what that is in pounds, so usually it's around 50 pounds, then you save a lot of money. Trust me, take that tip. Get the ones that come with the check bags already. That's what you want. Stay in an Airbnb outside of the tour zone. For example, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil is a perfect example of this. I stayed in La Angeles for a two bedroom, my first trip to Brazil. I think it was around $45 a night. La Angeles is kinda in a tourist zone, but it's still local a little bit. Copacabana, Ipanema, uh, Leblanc, whatever the other one is, those, Bahada Tijuca, and it's another one. Those are all tourist zones of Brazil. You're gonna get taxed. Not, not in Bahada, not in Tijuca, not in Bahada Tijuca, but Leblon, Ipanema, Copacabana, you're gonna get taxed. You stay in those areas. But if you stay in somewhere like Botafogo, Laranjeiras, Flamengo, it's gonna be like literally a lot cheaper to stay in those zones. The third trip I had, the second, the, the second trip I had to Brazil, I stayed in Copacabana, the tour zone. The price was almost $60 a night for a two bedroom that had one bathroom. And the first Airbnb was cheaper at about $45 a night, two bedrooms, two bathrooms. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, yeah, I'm closer to the beach and I'm in a tour zone, but also when I'm in a tour zone, now when I step outside, that burger, that Brazilian burger, that would have costed me uh, maybe five U.S. dollars, is now costing me 10, 15 U.S., a U.S. price. 10, 15 U.S. dollars for a burger. You know what I mean? So what's the black neighborhood? Uh, Madrueta. Madrueta. I ate outside of Casa Black Rio, uh, Rio in Madrueta a full meal for like $4.50. That same meal in Copacabana was damn near 20 bucks. Do not stay in the tour zone. But don't stay in Madrueta. Because it's dang, that's that's it's not that safe over there. Every, when I left Casa Black Rio last time, it was somebody standing outside directing traffic with a tick. So that's not really the safest area to be in Brazil. But Flamengo, Botafogo, La Angeles that are outside the tour zone, you're going to spend less money in those areas and it costs less money to stay in those areas. These air, Uber, you can Uber. You can Uber. You don't have to stay in the heart. You can stay 10 minutes away. That's just fine. You don't need to walk. But hey, do what you want. But it's for people that's on a budget. Now, you need to use Uber. And if, especially if you're in somewhere like Brazil, get Uber Pass. Uber Pass is, I believe, it's $25 a month. And they knock down the price of every Uber that you get. Is you'll end up saving money in the long run if you're somebody like me that doesn't have a car overseas and you drive everywhere. I mean, and you Uber everywhere. Or you can use Bolt. Bolt is cheaper than Uber most times. Now, you want to go to second and third world countries. Trying to travel around the world, going to places like Norway, Finland, Sweden, France, Germany, is going to hit your pockets a lot harder than somewhere like Brazil that is still, that's mostly developed, but still developing. Somewhere like Thailand that's still technically developing, but it's mostly developed. Somewhere like Cambodia, somewhere like Vietnam, those developing countries that are not up to par with the US, you know, standard of development, 
or modernization, that's where that's honestly where you want to be. You're going to meet the most humble people there, and it's going to be the cheapest to be there. So you're going to be able to do more when you get there. You know, uh, for me to go on a safari, it was $170, $120 for the car and $45 for me to get in, and I think it was $9 for her to get in or something like that because she was a local. It wouldn't have been that easy to drop $200 on a safari, which is not a lot, by the way, because in Tanzania, they're like 500 to like four and five grand, which is crazy. It wouldn't have been that easy to do that had I been somewhere in like France and you've been paying a lot more for everything else. Not that there's a safari in France, but you get what I mean. Use your money to fund your next trip so you can travel often. What do I mean by this? If you want to be like me and travel often, where I say, you know what, I'm going to travel every three months. I'm going to go to a new country every three months. Or I at least go out of the country every three months. I went to Brazil in February. I didn't talk to anybody. I worked. I put all my money towards my next trip. As soon as I got back from Brazil, a month later, I bought my plane ticket. Then a the month after that, I bought the Airbnb. Then I was gone. And that, that last month, I spent money collecting to spend when I got back to Brazil. And then I did it again. And then I went to Colombia and I did it again to go to Thailand. And then I never came back that last time. That's how you want to be able to, that's how you're going to be able to travel. You can't, unless if you're getting a lot of money, you know, and I was making 10 grand a month and that, that to me, that's not a lot of money. Cause I mean, it, you can spend that very, you can spend it all in one place. Uh, you cannot party in between the United States and other countries. Don't believe me. Just try it. You blow a shit ton of money. That's on you. Now, what you really need to do is get an international fee bank card, an international fee free bank card, debit card, credit card, whichever one you want to pick. Uh, right now, I have Wise. I know Charles Schwab is a good one. Capital One is a good one. Only thing I, I like Wise because you can it, you can actually add the currency. So I have the currency to each currency uh, country I go to, and when I use Uber. It doesn't pay in dollars. It pays in the shillings or the pesos or wherever I'm at. So it doesn't charge me an international fee because it's in their currency. Only thing about WISE is it doesn't work in a number of countries. It, it works in a lot of countries, but it doesn't work in a number of countries. It doesn't work in Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda. It doesn't work in Madagascar. It doesn't work in Zimbabwe. It doesn't work in the Ivory Coast. It doesn't work in a lot of countries in Africa. Just like that in Africa, what I see. Most countries, it still works in. So, just keep that in mind if you want to sign up for WISE. Another travel tip to travel on a budget. When you go overseas, guys, stop fucking trying to impress women. Get out of the United States mindset that in order to deal with these women outside the United States, you have to pop bottles and try to impress them and try to shower them with gifts. And if she's from a favela in Brazil, you're going to go take her to the mall uh, in Bada Tijuca and get her the most expensive shit you know. You can upgrade the lifestyle, but when you go overboard and start trying to impress women, you cut your trip short. You run out of money a lot faster. I've seen it happen too many times. But my friend that I went to Brazil with the second time, he wasn't trying to impress. But I noticed... We had to slow things down because we were spending too much. If you spend too much, you have to leave the country early. Or you'll spend the last days there feeling like shit. And if you had a woman you were talking to, now she's going to be like, what the hell happened? But they aren't American, so it might be a little different on how they react to that. Hang out with the locals, but be sure they aren't trying to use you. Okay? The reason I say hang out with the locals is because... If they're the right locals, they're going to take you to the spots that is cheapest to eat at, cheapest to hang out at. They're going to help you get the cheapest safari, help you get the cheapest taxi. They're going to they're going to they're going to put you in their shoes, meaning you'll spend money the same way, which is a lot less. But you have some locals that will try to use you, that will try to buy up all the shit and not have the money at the end of the day. Just watch out for that, though, though, because they are everywhere in Africa, too. Speaking of that, you want to drink less. Drink less alcohol. This is a no-brainer. Money runs a lot faster with alcohol, but if you can control it. I know most dudes are coming overseas to a party, including myself. 
Now I'm not here just to party, but you guys, you see my videos, you know I, I hang out a lot. I don't think I'll be hanging out very much here in Uganda because I need to generate more content because my subscribers are going up. I'm almost at 60,000. I want to be at 100,000. I need to stay focused. But for you guys that are on vacation, just drink less. I promise you'll save a lot more money. That works at just about every country in the world. Lastly, get your credit right. If you guys have not seen the results of good credit and good credit cards and how beneficial good credit can be for you, you need to fix your credit. If you guys like that, give it a like, comment what you think, share the video with somebody that may find this helpful. My cash app is dollar sign, Austin Holland, PayPal, Austin Holland at Gmail. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next video.